It's Sports by the Book at the South Point Studio. Here's Jeff Parles. Welcome in. It is Sports by the Book. Final day of the first weekend of the Big Dance. I'm Jeff Parles. Alex White is alongside. Eight more games to go in the opening weekend, Alex. And it has been uh, it has been the favorites galore so far in this tournament, which is, uh, again, this time of the year, you, well, we don't see that, <laughs> to say the very least. But uh, yesterday, boy, if you just went all the favorites on the money line right. yesterday, you were uh, put them all together. You did pretty well, to put it politely. Uh, about, uh, I think it was about, uh, what, the 50 to 1, 60 to 1 in the end. Uh, but, uh, or not that high, but regardless, uh, all favorites win outright last night, uh, yesterday in the NCAA tournament, Texas. Yes. Texas of all teams yesterday. Um, the only one who covered the opening number, Oakland covered late numbers and that was it. Every other favorite got home yesterday, North Carolina, uh, even though it seemed like everyone on 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 uh, gambling Twitter, I was trying to figure out the right way to put it out. Gambling Twitter uh, was on Michigan State. UNC wins comfortably. Uh, Arizona almost didn't cover, but they win by ten. They got there. Iowa State looked pretty shaky for a half. They win by eleven. Uh, Creighton and Oregon, boy, if you had Oregon, just take a lap. I mean, that was brutal. Double overtime, fifteen two run, a fifteen zero. To open the second overtime for Creighton, they outscored him fifteen to two to win eighty six seventy three, and then Gonzaga and Kansas, which for half Alex looked like the best game of the tournament. Yes, and then did. Kansas just got annihilated in the second half by Gonzaga. Absolutely no show for the Jayhawks in the second half. Well, I really don't. I don't think they had an answer offensively. None of their shots were going in, so they really struggled there. It was a good day. It's funny because we felt a little uh, slow. We didn't have a whole lot to talk about yesterday because we kind of knew that those those favorites were in a really good position with those matchups. I think we have a different story today. I think we have a lot of dogs definitely to cover even some potential upsets ahead today. So we'll get through those games. But you're right, Jeff, it's been a lot of favorites. Um, even through the first two days, even covering nine, five and two the first day, nine and seven the second day. And then you just said it yesterday, depending on the numbers that you got there. But, yeah, we'll see. I think I'm excited about today, and I'm really excited to uh, break down these games. There's only two matchups we already know in the Sweet 16, and there are two of the matchups that we were looking forward to when the bracket was released. The 2-3 in the East Bolt advance. We'll get to those later in that. Iowa State will play Illinois. We do have early numbers on that. Iowa State, two and a half in that one against Illinois. And Tennessee and Creighton, a game that I thought, bottom of uh, the Midwest, uh, I thought this was going to be the one that determines who makes it to the final four when it's all said and done. And I still feel that way in that South re in that Midwest region, I should say uh, that again, the Purdue wins boy, Detroit is going to end up with what, what a great region they're going to end up with, with Purdue and Gonzaga and one end Tennessee yes. and Creighton in the other. I mean, the East is going to do pretty good. Assuming UConn hold serve regardless of who wins that San Diego state Yale game later, and actually that is the latest tonight what's, in that one. What's the line you're seeing for Tennessee and Creighton? Two and a half. Tennessee. Two and a half for both. Same, okay. two and a half for both. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'll i say this, early inclination for me, I both I, I like both underdogs in, that, in those games. Stick with my bracket uh, for both of those. Yeah. The only, the only thing my bracket's been right on uh, this whole entire stretch. All right, let's dive into it. Let's start in Indianapolis, 8-29, 8-30. If you're betting it out here in Nevada, your first game of the day, Marquette will take on Colorado. Uh, Marquette, it was uh, a little bit scary for about 23 minutes for the Golden Eagles. Uh, a really awful close to the first half against 15-seed Western Kentucky. Uh, they were down at half. They're actually down seven. At the break, but then a dominant second half, which led to a very, very, uh, a very upsetting cover for at least from my perspective uh, with Marquette winning by 18, a 51 26 drubbing of the toppers in the second half. Uh, look, with Marquette, we've talked about it all year when they're forcing turnovers, when they're making shots, they're as good as anyone. 
But again, I'm not buying this team as much as some of these other high end teams. Colorado, Alex, played arguably the best game of the tournament, most entertaining wise, after playing an unwatchable game in the first four against Boise State. 202 points in their first round matchup against Florida. KJ Simpson bails him out with a bucket with 1.7 to go uh, after Florida's frantic comeback down 12 with under three minutes to go to get the game tied. Here you go. It's up to four and a half. I I just wonder, Alex, if there's going to be favorites that are bet more today just because of what has transpired, especially yesterday. I'll give you the floor first on that question because I'm a little surprised that this has come the way of Marquette getting bet more so than anything. I'm with you there. I'm very shocked that uh, that has moved already. And I think we're seeing a little overreaction with the total here moving up to 150. And I think that is because we saw that Colorado and Florida game hit 202, like you said. But I think that's more on Florida's defense than anything. Colorado did hang in there pace-wise with them as well. So I think they can do that here with Marquette as well. They can, they can run with them. I've been higher on the Golden Eagles than most. I know you and Matt, we had talked and... You guys didn't like them. After really diving into their numbers, you're right, Jeff. There's a lot of the fundamentals that they aren't doing right. So they've been more fortunate than you realize. Their offensive and defensive rebounding is is not good. Their free throw shooting is not good. So it's all these little things that can catch up to them here. I think four and a half is way too many points. I took four. I got a bad number. I took that on the overnight last night. But I just think. The main thing in this game is going to be Colorado taking care of the ball because they do turn it over at a bad percentage right here, and that is where Marquette can capitalize, as you mentioned. So I'm going to make the case for Marquette, even though it's not the side that I like in this game. The, there are plenty of numbers that just pop of, hey, this is going to regress to the mean for Colorado today. Colorado even though they are a very good three-point shooting team. They're sixth in the country, nearly 40%. They shot 60% from three against Florida. That's not sustainable. They shot 63% from the field total. They do have a very high effective field goal percentage. They're 16th in the country. They're very efficient on offense. But again, that's astronomically high. You're probably going to see a little regression. You mentioned it with the turnovers on the Colorado end. They are in the bottom 100 of turnover percentage in the country. And as we've talked about with Marquette, they force turnovers. They're top 20. They don't turn the ball over themselves. Right. They're top 30 in committing turnovers, which that's the good end of committing turnovers. And Colorado on defense does not force any turnovers. So don't expect a random, wait a second, Marquette has 16 turnovers in this game? Don't expect something like that. That's not going to happen more likely than not. Now, the best player in this game is on Colorado. I know people will say, oh, it's probably Tyler Kolek. No, 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 no. It's K.J. Simpson. Uh, As we saw at the end of that game against Florida, he might have got away with a push-off, but hey, shouldn't call that at the end of that game. He has been been great all year. He's a a top-flight NBA prospect. Him and Cody Williams are are both NBA players. And when it's all said and done, I'm going to tell you, I like the roster that has more NBA guys on it. And I know people get on Tad Boyle and, and such. I think Tad's a good coach. I think he's always been a good coach. This has been a very weird year for Colorado where they've dealt with injuries. And then when they got healthy, they weren't even at, they weren't as good as you, you would have expected with this roster. I didn't even think after they lost to Oregon in the Pac-12 title game, they deserved to be in the tournament. But as we know, every tournament, some team goes from Dayton to win at least one game and sometimes two. It would not shock me if the Buffs win this game outright, which would then put us in a scenario, if you're the Houston Cougars, the bottom half of that region would be 10 versus 11. Just handle your business, get to the Final Four if you're Houston at this point. Uh, I do like Colorado, though, plus four and a half now. I I would not be shocked if we see five by game time. I think there is going to be an overreaction in the market on favorites because of what happened yesterday, Alex. I really do. And another part for Colorado that can really help them in this game is Marquette's not great at defending the three. So, yes, we will see a little regression, but you talked about those numbers, and that's over the span of this entire season. So I do think that they they will shoot well, and the best part is they've got the size. They can definitely hang in this one with this, with this Marquette team. So I'm with you. Taking the points with Colorado. 
All right, let's move along here to the second game of the day. This is in the Midwest region, Purdue, the number one seed. Yeah, it looked a little hairy for a little bit in that first half. They just put it on grambling in the second half. Not much of a shock. Uh, they covered all numbers as well. I mean, pretty brutal if you had grambling. The only time they weren't couple, c- covering was the last minute of the game. Pretty brutal if you had uh, the Tigers in that one. Now against Utah State, we are 11 and a half on this one uh, with Utah State and Purdue. Uh, 149 and a half uh, on this one, Alex. I, I am just curious real quick here where Utah State, I'll give them credit. I thought they were the weakest Mountain West team in the field of 64 because Boise didn't technically make the field of 64. They just made the field of 68. But I'll credit uh, I'll credit Utah State. They're clearly the better team after the first six minutes against TCU. And for Danny Sprinkle to win a tournament game with returning nothing from the team a year ago that was in the NCAA tournament. They lost to Missouri last year in round one. It's unbelievably impressive. But this is just – this feels like a really bad matchup for Utah State. The only thing that I will say that I will hesitate, if Osabor can give them anything from outside the paint and draw Edie away, that's when this could come a little dicey for Purdue. With that said, I can't bet this game. Now that we're at 11 and a half, I'm not interested. I haven't bet it yet either. Um, I do think there is, you can make a case for Utah State in taking the points here, but we've talked about it all year. Purdue... Now Zach Eady has the guards, right, that can shoot from deep. Utah State, one of their best things is that, is guarding the three-point. They held uh, TCU to under 32% from deep and 36% from the field in general. So they are a good defensive team, and they can guard the perimeter there, but it's going to be tough. Uh, Purdue had 48 rebounds in their first game against Grambling. I think that's where... Utah State is going to struggle a little bit here, but I made this number right here at 11. I still, I mean, I think we've all kind of thought Purdue is a little vulnerable going into this tournament. It's just, I don't know if this is the matchup. Edie at 30 and 21 in round one against an undersized grambling team. Now, the way this bracket has played out, we already know three of the four teams that are going to Detroit in the Midwest. Uh, we already mentioned Tennessee and Creighton on the bottom end. I'm not backing down from what I've thought the entire time. I think the winner of that game will represent this region in Phoenix uh, in two weekends from now as the uh, in the Final Four. But the biggest thing I did not foresee in this tournament, what has transpired with Gonzaga, where Gonzaga has looked, they have looked like Gonzaga of old in the first two games in this tournament. Just an absolute demolition of McNeese in the first half. Uh, to win that game by 21. Game wasn't that close. And then what they did to Kansas in the second half, Kansas was winning at halftime. They were ahead. It was 44-43 KU at half. And then Gonzaga just vaporized them in the second half, winning both games by 21 points, a 46-24 second half drubbing. Uh, Look, Kansas was not playing any defense in the second half. They were just gassed by by the time that game ripped around. Bill Self was out of timeouts with 10 and a half minutes to go. Kind of just showed what type of second half that was for KU. But, Alex, if, assuming Purdue wins this game, which, look, they're 11 and a half point favorites. They got over the hump with, the, with beating a double-digit seed. They won't have to see a double-digit seed again. The only time they would probably see, potentially even see it, would be if an NC State or a Colorado or James Madison somehow came out of the top of the right side of the bracket in the south. There are three double digits still alive there. Uh, but... I think they're the weakest of the four teams that are going to be going to Detroit with the current four. Purdue would be. Yes. And I don't, Purdue would come a favorite against Gonzaga. Purdue would come a favorite against all the remaining teams. Maybe not Tennessee. That would be the one that I'd be intrigued to see what the number would come. But I have a hard time seeing them. Yes. Be Utah state. Sure. But I have a very hard time seeing them even with a ton of Purdue fans going to be in a building, easy trek from West Lafayette to Detroit. I just don't see them coming out of that region because the teams around them, and we all said, oh, that UConn draw is really difficult. Yeah. Purdue ended up with the most difficult draw when it's all said and done once you reach the second weekend just because Gonzaga is so much more threatening than whoever wins Yale and San Diego State. Yes. No, you're 100% right. Gonzaga has definitely turned it on at the right point. I'm a little worried about Creighton now and uh, 
what we saw yesterday. Um, Tennessee looked really good, but you're right. When you talk about the four one seeds, North Carolina in current form, they looked great yesterday. They're a good defensive team. I I do think um uh, they're looking a little tougher than I thought. I have Arizona mm-hmm. going to the final four from that region, but it's it's gonna be a gonna be a tough one for them. I, I, I did again, I, I know we talked about it yesterday. It was a clip we posted on social. I didn't I really did not understand the whole the Michigan State love yesterday and look there for, was one trend, right? It, it, was, one, it, was, seed. it was one trend. It was one trend. <laughs> Favored was, by four it, less, and it was a yeah. small sample size trend also, where uh up until yesterday only one 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 seed that was four and a half. Well, they closed four and a half. So the train the trend changed by the time that the game the game started. But for the bulk of the day, Carolina four was a four point favorite as a one seed. The only one seed to cover the number out of five tries was nineteen ninety four Missouri, and or actually out of seven tries, I should say. And five of the seven before yesterday had lost outright. Right. So. I don't know. I, I think North Carolina, I know it's crazy to say about UNC, but I think they got underrated this year. I really do. They are really, really good. And if we get UNC against Arizona in the Elite Eight, I'm going to tell you right now, I'll be on North Carolina in that game because I'm going to get a team that I think is better as, as an underdog in that game against Arizona. So we'll see if we get that. Uh, I know Baylor and the winner of Baylor or Clemson think that we'll have something to say about that potentially in Los Angeles. One last thing on the, on the, uh, on the, on the Midwest because we already know the bottom matchup. Both Tennessee and Creighton escaped yesterday in games that you would say, okay, Tennessee made two three-pointers against Texas. You usually don't survive that in the NCAA tournament. And Tennessee did. Creighton was down six with five minutes to go. They were down four with 16 seconds to go. And they survived that. Both teams survived games you normally don't get through in this tournament, which makes me think, all right, whoever comes out of that Sweet 16 game, May not just be the final four as the next stop. Maybe the national title game. Wow, you don't survive those two th- those type of games usually. Again, every champion has ha- has one usually one. Right. UConn That's... was an anomaly last year where they just blitzed everybody, but you usually have one where it's like, whoa, we were lucky to survive. And both Tennessee and Creighton had that yesterday. That's so a very good point. We'll, we'll yeah. see how that all plays out uh, in that region. All right, let's go to Brooklyn. Let's go to Brooklyn. America's darling now, James Madison, wire to wire against Wisconsin on Friday night. Very impressive. You know, if you've seen James Madison play all year, you, I can't say you're overly sh- surprised of how good they look. I'm just surprised that they did it that thoroughly, that Wisconsin really didn't feel like they were even in the game at any point. Yeah, I know they got yeah. it back to five at one point, but then James, you push it right back to 11. Very impressive the whole way from the Dukes. The Blue Devils, look, they just put the clamps. Vermont just did not have enough offense when it was all said and done. A 17-point win and a cover for the Blue Devils on Friday night. Now it's Duke versus Dukes in this one. Seven, Alex. Uh, we are actually have not really moved. The only thing that's moved in this game, uh, the money line on JMU uh, has is now plus 240. Duke is minus 280 as opposed uh, to the $3 they were when they opened. Total is still 148. This is at seven. I think that kind of tells you what you all what you need to know on this one, Alex. That hasn't moved. Yeah, I think numbers are pretty spot on uh, with everything. With that said, <laughs> I don't like JMU to cover. I, I'm not sure if they have enough to get there outright, but this feels like a close game. And if this game is close down the wire, this is all laying down on Duke. This is you're supposed to win this game. You didn't get to the Sweet 16 a year ago, remember? Duke five four matchup against Tennessee. They were close. I think three and a half point favorites in that game and got destroyed by Tennessee in a round of thirty two a year ago. Not a particularly easy matchup. James Madison's great shooting the three ball. We saw that the other night. Good on defense. They're not scared. I wouldn't be shocked that JMU does if they're in this game late. I don't be surprised if JMU pulls this thing out right. Then Houston could end up with like the greatest draw of all time technically by seeds. Uh, getting to a Final Four, potentially. They are a live dog. That is why I did take the points. You really, I mean, if you can find a spot where you're getting points with a team that has um, the ability to win the game, that's a great spot to be in. The biggest thing with Duke for me is their defensive numbers are so good. They're 22 on Ken Palm, but if you really dive in, they're good at everything. They're not great at anything, right? I think they're. it's really skewed because teams haven't shot – 
free throws well against them. So that has made their number even better. Duke has nothing to do with that, of course. So I do think James Madison can take advantage here. The other thing is Duke, I mean, they played a lousy Louisville team, Virginia, who we know is not any good. They had a really good game against NC State, and then they lost North Carolina and NC State coming into this tournament. They got an easy draw against Vermont. So I think they do prevail. I hope they do. I have them in our auction bid over there. But I definitely think James Madison keeps this close. Seven points is way too many. Good old free throw defense, as we like to call it. Now, look, JMU is on a 14-game winning streak. I th- and, and winning streak. I will say, I thought they got a, a perfect matchup with Wisconsin in round one. You did, Really yes. did think that was as good of a matchup as they could have drawn. And they took full advantage of it. But here's the one other thing, though, that, that gives me – that doesn't give me a lot of pause on JMU. Their three-point defense is really good. It's number two in the country. Duke is top 20 at three-pointers made. Whichever team wins that battle's winning this game, or at least covering this game, I should say. Because if JMU can keep Duke down from the three-point line, yep. all right, beat us inside. They're capable. Duke is more than capable of doing it. But I give JMU a real shot here. And uh, I can tell you right now, the UConn fans that will be in attendance and Northwestern fans that will be in attendance, they'll be all be rooting for JMU. I can tell you that right now. Uh, if you're not a Duke fan and you live in the tri-state area, you're rooting against Duke. And you're rooting against Duke pretty heavily uh, in that sort of scenario. All right, the other game in Brooklyn. Number one overall seed, Connecticut, will take on Northwestern. Northwestern winning in overtime in round one against FAU. Uh, FAU uh, losing not just that game, but Dusty May taking the Michigan job last night. So uh, nice two-year run for FAU. Probably not probably not going to be back here for a while uh, at this rate with that team. Uh, UConn, that game was, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, <laughs> a butt-whipping uh, against Stetson. Uh, poor Stetson. Finally make the NCAA tournament. Your reward is the goose by 39 to UConn. Uh, actually, in all champion. honesty, the handicap on a total was right. Stetson just didn't get us there. That's all it was. UConn named their score. Stetson only put up 52. Couldn't quite get there. But look, when the Huskies are on, they are they are the best team. There's no debate for that. Northwestern, uh, Boo Booey was great. It was Ryan Langborg, actually, in the overtime. who really took the game over like he did a year ago with Princeton. It was awesome in uh, the tournament win over Missouri and the close loss to Creighton in the uh, Sweet 16. Uh, Just a tournament player. 13 and a half, 136 here, Alex. Uh, This did get as high as 15 here at the South Point, so it has been taken back down to the opener at 13 and a half here. I, I I understand that. Taking those points, especially if you're getting 14 or more here. My numbers don't say it. I do have UConn as a 15 point favorite here, so I haven't bet it yet, but I like this Northwestern team. They're very scrappy. I thought Boo Booey was like the main um, guy. And uh, I mean, he had a great game. Don't get me wrong. He had over 20 points, but there's some other uh, guards on there that uh, Mart, um, Martinelli had a fabulous game against FAU there, and I think he'll really step up again here. I like the under. I took under 136 in this one. Both teams trend to the under away from home this year. Northwestern, Northwestern 9-6. and six. UConn 11-8 and eight to the under. They're also 4-1 and one to the under in their last five. Big thing that Northwestern, they take care of the ball. Um, one of the best in the country. So if they can prevent those turnovers, kind of hang in this game and just stretch it out a little bit, eat up the clock. So I went with the under. I'm trying to make a case for Northwestern here. I I think they can hang around, but I don't know if they can do it for the whole 40 minutes. Again, with Northwestern, uh, Barry out for the year with the knee injury. Nicholson, they're big, didn't play in round one. I would not expect a lot of them here in this one if he is even able to go. I, I uh, Vlad Golden had a big game for... FAU, he did break that free throw, which caused the overtime to happen. But a different animal with UConn. I don't know how Northwestern contains Klingon today. I just don't. And we are talking about a ton of points. So, yeah, North could Northwestern cover 13 and a half, even though you're not getting the best of it? Yeah, they, they could. Uh, but this, is, this was the easiest stay off today for me. Uh, because UConn's ability to just pour it on 
and win this game by 23 is very much in play. You could also get the nonchalant effort from UConn, and this is like a four-point game with six minutes to go, and UConn pulls away and wins by nine. So I, I, it's a tough handicap more so than anything. I, I think I will say for UConn's benefit uh, in this one, again, you're playing a de facto home game. We've talked about this yes. with UConn. They don't have to get on a plane until the final four. Easy bus trip from stores to, to Brooklyn. Next week, it's an easy one from stores to Boston. The fans can make an easy trek. I mean, just take the train uh, down into Barclays. I mean, it's as good of a draw as UConn could have uh, could have drawn up. Period. Other than maybe play, other than playing at Hartford for a round, uh, but in the end, the Huskies. Are, we've said I've said it all year. The Huskies are the best team in college basketball. If they didn't win it last year, I think it would have been even more strong for everyone to pick them this year. It's just so hard to repeat yes, that I there was some right. there's hesitation from some of hey, how can you do this, win 12 in a row in the NCAA tournament? That's extraordinarily difficult, which is what UConn is trying to do uh, to <laughs> win back-to-back uh, national championships. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We get back. We got a few more in, co- in the NCAA tournament. Uh, second round of the women's tournament as well going on today. Uh, and also we'll see if Alex has anything in Daytona Beach at the CBI. The CBI at Daytona Beach. NIT. And the NIT. We yeah. do have the NIT as well. Yeah, well. I do have one on that. I, one. I, let me guess. They're they're red and scarlet. Or scarlet and gray, I should say, right? Scarlet and gray? A little scarlet and gray? No. 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 Wow. It is scarlet and gray. Those are the right yeah. colors, but that's up my bet. Wow. Surprised. <laughs> I, I well I said I said red and scarlet, and that's the same color. <laughs> so uh, it shows what I know uh, on that one. We're back You're with red more and scarlet. That's we're, good. we're back with more next sports by the book. South Point offers all the types of entertainment you'd expect at a first-class Las Vegas resort. Did you know our 400-seat showroom is one of Las Vegas' top destinations for live entertainment? Enjoy live performances by classic Vegas entertainers, bands, and today's hottest comedians, plus a rock and dance floor. You can also enjoy live entertainment at the Grand View Lounge, where you'll feel all the vibes of old Las Vegas. Enjoy the music, and if you love to laugh, don't miss The Dirty at 1230, our very own free comedy show, every Friday night at 12.30 a.m. in the Grandview Lounge. The Dirty is 100% free, so arrive early. Go to southpointcasino.com or call the box office at 77136 for today's performances at the showroom and the Grandview Lounge. When you're ready for your favorite cocktail, Stop in and unwind at one of our seven specialty lounges. There's a bar around every corner, because you're in Vegas, baby. South Point Casino has plenty of attractions for the whole family. Catch a movie. Our 16-screen movie theater includes two XD extreme screens for the ultimate in viewing, sound, and luxury. After the show, treat the family to a variety of treats at our old-fashioned ice cream parlor, Kate's Corner. We scoop up a variety of creamy concoctions, including smoothies, hand-dipped cones, milkshakes, malts, sodas, and sundaes. At Kate's, there's something for everyone. And if you've still got time to spare, our bowling center might be right up your alley. Voted Best of Las Vegas, it's a great place for friends and family fun. 64 lanes, a pro shop, snack bar, and arcade. And while the kids are bowling, you can play slots and sip on a drink in the Alley Cat Lounge while overlooking the lanes. For our more serious and professional bowlers, the South Point is also home to a separate tournament bowling plaza. Welcome back in Sports by the Book, South Point Studio. I'm Jeff Piles, Alex White alongside uh real quick here just want to throw this out there uh the uh the women's tournaments in around a 32 as well right now uh i have no plays today because the only thing that even was remotely good yesterday was the florida gulf coast one i gave you um everything else was bad including fairfield looking at you tied in the second quarter getting 24 and a half losing by over 30 not good not what we want it was tough. It was a lot of chalk. Well, that's the thing was we're going to bring up where in the past, before the gap, when the gap was so wide between high-end teams and lower-end teams in women's college basketball, again, the gap is still wide, but it has narrowed considerably since even just 2020, 
since the pandemic hit, it's, it's narrowed considerably. Uh, Seed-wise in the NCAA tournament, on the women's side, there was only one, one seed upset. One seed upset. It was Middle Tennessee 11 over Louisville, which actually uh, robbed us of Haley Van Lith playing against her former team in the round of 32. Uh, there was only one seed upset. There were a few is- betting upsets. Uh, Kansas was an underdog as an eight seed. They beat Michigan in overtime yesterday. Syracuse was an underdog as a six seed against Arizona, the 11, and came back from eight down in the last two minutes to win in regulation by five, uh, which was a pretty miraculous comeback. Um, Iowa State was, I believe, a pick, maybe a one-point dog against Maryland, and they came from 22 down to win that game. So there were some betting upsets, but seed upset-wise, on the women's side, that was the bracket he really needed to take chalk in one seed upset in round one, which is honestly astounding with how the gap is narrowed in, in, in women's college basketball. It yeah. really is. Yeah, that is crazy. So nothing for you today. Staying away from women. No, staying off. The only game that I'm, I'm intrigued by is I want to see how Colorado and Kansas State plays out. Colorado beat LSU to open, to open the season. Uh, they, I don't want to even say they struggled. The Pac-12 on the women's side was just unbelievably good where USC's a one seed, UCLA's a two seed, Stanford's a two seed. All those teams were capable of getting one seed. So a little bit surprising that the Pac-12 didn't get two number one seeds when it was all said and done. They were in the Big 12. Colorado Colorado might have won the Big 12. Texas was a one seed because of that. That's the game I'm most likely looking at. Again, all they remember, the better seed has home court in these games because chalk prevailed in everything. So this game is in Manhattan. So K-State does have home court in this game. You have to remember that when you're betting these women's games. Do you feel like you owe uh, Shannon Sharp an apology? <laughs> is it the final four yet? Not yet, not yet. So <laughs> we'll wait for that. Yeah, Shannon Sharp just... picking all number one seeds in both the women's and men's brackets for him. <laughs> They're Very all good. still alive. All still there. Yep. Got to give him credit for that. Yeah, maybe at least for that. All right, back to the men's side of we things. We can go to NIT real oh, quick. Oh, you do have the NIT play. Uh, Minnesota and Indiana State uh, in Terre Haute today. Uh, Gophers uh, went on the road and won in Butler earlier in the week. Indiana State uh, handled their business against SMU, and uh, SMU fired Rob Lanier, which made absolutely no sense uh, in the middle of this week. Uh, SMU is moving to the ACC, but still kind of stupid that they did that. Uh, that was a 101-92 game, Alex. Very... Uh, very good defense played in that game. Uh, totals 161 and a half. Uh, this one, Terre Haute, Indiana for this one. So this is my only favorite of the day. I am laying the points here with Indiana Indiana State. I just think they are the better team. I mean, they have shot 50% from the field this year on average, 50.7 actually. And I know Minnesota is very good against the spread, 25 and 8 on the year, but just 8 and 5 on the road. So this will be in Indiana State as well. They are 10 and 3 against the spread at home, 14 and 1 straight up. This is a really good team. I know that you know that cuz you were talking about them going into the tournament, but in current form, they won 6 straight before losing that game to Drake. So, I like Indiana State here to handle their business and to cover this big number. Yeah, again, uh, Indiana State, uh the committee claims they were left out because of all the bid steals. Uh we could have left Virginia out, guys. You didn't know that. Like, we could have put Indiana State against Colorado State and would have at least been a basketball game in Dayton that day. We might have had 200 points in that compared. Well, I mean, <laughs> Virginia, Virginia, whatever. I, mean, I made my point very clear on that. Uh, but, uh, no, look, for Indiana State, it would not shock me if they end up winning the NIT. Uh, right now, uh, Seton Hall are, has already advanced to an NIT uh, fu- uh, NIT semifinal. They'll actually play the winner of your alma mater. That's tonight, right. Uh, between uh, which is terrible for UNLV. UNLV. That's a lot of travel. Oh, I mean, they could have kept them on the East Coast, but Boston College didn't couldn't host a game today. So because it'd be two trips to New Jersey yes. for uh, UNLV. They already won in Princeton. Yes. Earlier in the week, UNLV four and a half against Boston College. All right, back to the big dance. Let's get back to yes. It. All right, let's go to let's go to Memphis. Clemson and Baylor, 833-834, 310 out here on the West Coast. Alex, I'm a little bit shocked at how this game's getting bad. I, Clemson was the one team all week long. How are they a six seed? Oh, they're playing New Mexico. is playing great right now. They're going to lose. 
Uh, New Mexico, the 11 seed is favored. Uh, New Mexico gets destroyed by Clemson. Probably the best game Clemson has played all year, in all honesty. They were awesome in that game. Winning that game comfortably. New Mexico was never in it. Uh, and credit credit to Brad Brunell, who, again, is the cycle of life for Brad Brunell. Win, win a game in the NCAA tournament, be mediocre forever, get on the hot seat, and then win a game in the NCAA tournament to get another seven years out of the tenure there in Clemson. Now they take on Baylor, where Baylor, you know what, they, they couldn't name their score against Colgate. I mean, it was right. clear early that Baylor was just so much more athletic. Colgate just didn't have the personnel in order to stay in that game. Baylor wins by 25, 92-67. Alex, I, this game opened four and a half. I don't think you can tell me that Baylor's only two and a half points better than New Mexico. I, I just, you can't. No. And you, uh, yes, I know you're adjusting based off of what you saw, but then for the market to bet Clemson to four here, like, what, what are we doing? Like, look, if Clemson wins the game outright or covers the number, so be it. I'm willing to be wrong here. This is the wrong line move, guys. Yeah, this is the wrong line move. This should be going the other way. Where Baylor, look, we've talked about Baylor's problems this year. They're not good on defense. I understand that. But we're dealing again with elite athletes on the Baylor side. And Clemson just played their best game they have played. I- I'm serious. I think that was their, other than the win at Alabama, that was the best game they played all year. Period. And it came in the NCAA tournament with everyone with the eyes on them. And like, oh, wait a second. Maybe the ACC wasn't that bad. All right, well, sure, the ACC could end up with four Sweet 16 teams when this is all said and done. Clemson pulls this up and, and Duke handles their business today. But I don't see this. I think Baylor's just significantly better. I, I, I understand it's a favorite. At some point, the dogs are going to come barking. I get it. But the wrong move. This is the wrong move here on this game. Baylor's just way better. And if Clemson gets us, so be it. I'll just move on to the next play. I very happily only have to lay four with the Bears. They're just way better in this game. You think it'll move even more? If we can get three and a half, I would love to jump uh, let's, on let's the, not, the Bears. Let's not get too greedy okay. here. I mean, if this okay. goes to three and a half, I mean, if, I, I just don't get it. It just doesn't make sense. Okay, so just like the gambling Twitter that we talked about, anti-UNC support for Michigan State, it's been a big thing all over the internet on how good the ACC has done in this tournament. Yeah, so it could there, be some support there. Like you said, coming back with the dogs. I'm with you. I don't think this is the right dog to take today. I like Baylor. I mean, these two are pretty pretty equal defensively, right? They both have very similar numbers here. Uh, and Clemson is Clemson is slightly better on defense. I okay. will give them that. They're slightly better on defense. Okay. Honestly, and, Clemson... Clemson's analytic profile looks great. I just watching them that they're one of the teams in this tournament where their analytic profile does not match what I've watched with them all year. They built that analytic profile with their non-con where they beat Boise, they beat Alabama, they beat Pittsburgh, they beat South Carolina, which turned out to be a great win. They beat TCU. I didn't mention a lot of good teams in non-conference. And I don't think they match what their profile says. Well, and looking at them offensively, you just said how many guys Baylor has. I completely agree. Their shooting percentage is way better. I mean, this this Clemson team shot 44, 45% really from the field against New Mexico. Before that, Boston College held them to 35%. They were 46% against Wake Forest. So that's where I think that they're going to really struggle here. And I think that game had a lot more to do with New Mexico, who shot 29% from the field pretty much no showed against Clemson so i think that is an overreaction on Clemson here i think it's the wrong move i think it's the wrong move and if clemson gets there so be it i'll very happily be on a favorite that i that i think is much better and definitely more than 4 points better when it's all said and done on clemson and baylor we're both on the bears and now one all right Keeping it in Memphis, a and will take on Houston, Battle of the Long- Lone Star State. I'm a little bit surprised how this one's been bet, too. Even though I, un- I, I, I understand the argument for a and in this game. There is an understanding here where they are really good rebounding the basketball. And as we said earlier, Houston makes a living off of rebounding their own misses. 
They may not be able to do that as well in this game. He's open nine and a half, got as high as ten and a half, coming back down a ladder to nine now. Total one thirty four up from one thirty two and a half. The big question mark for me in this game, more than anything, Alex, is are the Aggies capable of being this good on offense again? Where the Aggies in postseason play, I mean, this is an A and M offense that was for a time this year, they just bad. And because of this run, this recent run they're on, their offensive profile has gone back into the top 30 on Ken Pop offensive efficiency, which I just don't think they are. They had 98 points on 74 possessions against Nebraska. They, I, they put 90 yeah, They put 97 on Kentucky. They put 90 on Florida. I understand I didn't mention a good defensive team in those SEC teams, but can they do it against the best defense in the country? My inclination is no. I don't think they need that much here. You don't think they need that much? I okay. love a and I took the Ooh, 10. Okay. I took the 10. I um, These two already played each other once this year, and Houston won yep. that game 70-66. to 66. So this team's not going to be afraid of Houston going in there. They also outscored Houston in the second half 43-32. to 32. So I really like the Aggies in this one. I think they can keep it close. Jeff, I also want you to take a look at Ken Palm and look at Houston's offensive numbers. They are 123 from three-point percentage, 243 from two-point field goals. That's not good. So everybody's been very worried about these other really good defensive teams and not having the offense to pull them through this tournament. I'm I'm starting to really worry about uh, Houston here. But, But again, this goes back to what I said, though. Like, Houston's offense is rebounding their misses. Right. That is their offense. That is what, look, and they're great at it. And it's part of the reason that they have been a number one, they were number one seed last year and a number one seed this year. They're in the final four in 2021. Like that is how they are built. But I don't think this is the matchup. The way that that bracket is, is is lining up right now. Mm -hmm. They need to make the final four. That's just the way it is. The bottom of the bracket, I, even if Marquette wins today, I think they have the weak. They got they drew the weakest two with Marquette. Yes, I NC agree. State is there as an eleven seed into this into the Sweet Sixteen. Duke, Duke has a four. I think I think Michigan. I or excuse me. I think Houston matches up great with Duke. I, I think I think that the Cougars will beat Duke by ten. If it's James Madison, I think they'd handle them as well, but. You got to make the final four if you're Kelvin Sampson and company, and you can't be losing to an in-state rival, right? In in, in the NCAA tournament, when is I? I'm not touching this, but I think you missed the best of it. I yeah. I do I like the ten here, but yeah, I I think they uh, they can keep this close. Let's uh, let's move along. Let's go to Spokane, Washington. Grand Canyon against Alabama. By the way, Colorado and Marquette underway. Marquette's out five nothing immediately. Uh, close four and a half with a one fifty one behind us here at the South Point on Colorado and Marquette uh, early goings in Indianapolis for that one. All right, now to Spokane, Grand Canyon taking on Alabama. Bama six in this one total one seventy. What a shock! Bama in the one seventy yet again. <laughs> um, this is up from one sixty eight and a half. So. Uh, the betters have bet this thing up. I'll just ask you here, because uh, this is a hard one for me. Uh, Grand Canyon, I was wrong. We were both wrong in the first round game, where we both thought that that was a horrible matchup for them, that the veteran-laden team, yes, the lack of depth on St. Mary's was an issue, but we thought St. Mary's would handle their business. They did not. Grand Canyon was clearly the right side, basically from the 18-minute mark on in the second half, and even the first half, they were the right side. But Alabama is so Jekyll and Hyde that I don't know how you can bet Alabama games at this point. Where for the first 10 minutes against Charleston, it looked like, uh uh-oh, it's going to be one of those days. Yep. Charleston can stay in this thing. Maybe they can pull the upset. And then the light bulb went on, and then it was like, oh, Bama could win by 30. (laughs) And they ended up winning by double digits. They let Charleston come make it tighter at the end window dressing more than anything. So. 
Tough one here for me, Alex. It is really tough because you're right. I do. I can see both sides. I can see Grand Canyon hanging in this one, and I can also see Alabama pulling away late and <laughs> blowing them out. But <clears throat> my numbers say to take the dog here, so I'm going to take the dog. I made it a. I made Alabama a two point favorite. So six points, a lot of value here with them. And Grand Canyon has been excellent covering the spread, ten and six. On the road this year, 5-0 and in their last five, compared to Bama, who is 1-4 and against the spread in their last five. So I think they can keep it close. They can hang in this one, especially with Bama and their lack of defense. Teams have really struggled in this tournament that don't play great defense. So I think Grand Canyon is playing with house money. They won that one against St. Mary's, already had a tough matchup, and I think they can keep it close here against Alabama. The total is crazy. I did... I, I have it right here at 170, so not running to bet this over. At this so you number. have it right on the number. Yes. You know, it's <laughs> these Alabama totals, again, the pace we've talked about it all year with Bama, their pace justifies these totals being this high. Their defense justifies this total being this high as well. Grand Canyon has high major athletes. I, I don't think there's any arguing that anymore. Uh, Ty, Ty and Grant Foster is, quite frankly, should be in a Power Five school. He, he is that good. Uh, Ray Harrison, same deal. Preseason whack player of the year. Harrison, actual whack player of the year in in Grant Foster. Those guys are yeah. really, really good, and they are more than capable of keeping Grand Canyon in this game. But as I said earlier, I can't bet this at all because of Alabama. I have no idea what I'm getting on a game to game basis. And look, it's tough for anyone to stay in the game when Bama's making their threes. Right. And there's no reason to think Grand Canyon can if Bama's making their threes. That changes when we get to next week with Bama if they were to win today. Because now that we're getting down to the final, the elite of the elite, all right, you know what? North Carolina probably can stay in a game with Alabama if they're hitting threes. Arizona can probably stay in a game if Bama's hitting their threes. That's definitely. UConn, same deal. Like, once we get down to these elite teams, all right, now the elite teams are capable of staying in, even if Bama has a big time shooting night out. I will say, Grand Canyon is very good at defending threes. They are, uh, uh, okay, 90th in the, they're still the top 100 here. So we'll see. They're better at that, that two point percentage defensively. So. I, will, I will say, their length, especially in the whack, hard, it's harder for those whack teams to, to score Makes sense, on yes. that type of length. Uh, when, when it's all said and done, I, I think that's part of the reason their defensive numbers were the way that they are. Again, they did lose three games in whack play. Their only non-con loss this year, South Carolina. Don't love that because South Carolina, when they played Alabama this year, um, 74-47. So, I don't know. A South Carolina team overachieved when it was all said and done. Me too. Anyway. All right. So, you tread know, lightly there. So, what dogs... Are we, you taking we, points? We, we, we have one more. We have one more. Don't don't come on. <laughs> getting, getting ahead don't of myself. Out, don't leave out one of the biggest upsets of the of the whole tournament so uh, far, Alex. My favorite. Can't do that. Okay. Uh, the Yale Bulldogs, of course, upsetting Auburn in round <laughs> one. Will take on, really. Uh, yes, I know Utah State's still in the tournament, but the last hope of the Mountain West, San Diego State. I, I, I yes, sorry Utah State fans, you're not winning today, but San Diego State. Five and a half against Yale uh, with a total of 130. Alex, I'll give you the floor first because. Uh, You're going to have to take this one. Oh, that's I not really nice. have no. That's not nice. Come I on, have man. this number right here at five. I have the total at 132. There's not much I can do. I don't like the San Diego State team very much. I think that they do play really good defense. They don't let up, and that is what their strength is. They are just on you the entire time. I think Ladie is an excellent athlete, and he's their whole offense. I think it really just depends on if a team can shut him down. I don't know if Yale has it in them to be able to do that today, but I just, yeah, I know SDSU's athletic, good defensive team. Just, they really lack something. Uh, I can't, and I guess it's just that they depend on Ladie too much. All right, you want more short sample trends here, Alex? <laughs> Seven thirteen seeds have made it out of the round of 64 in the last decade. They're 0-7 against the number in the round of 32. San Diego State has drawn now 13 seeds in the round of 32 back-to-back -back years. 
course, Furman last year beating Virginia in the round of 64 in that ridiculous finish. San Diego State just destroyed Furman from the jump in that game a year ago in Orlando. Uh, they were four-and-a-half-point favorites last year in that, game, in that game. This year, they're a point more against Yale. I think San Diego State is weaker this year than they were a year ago, and I think Yale's better than this Furman team, than that Furman team was a year ago as well. Now, am I correlating anything on that? No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, but I will say for – I do – I really want to bet Yale because I don't buy the San Diego State team. They're one player. Now, granted – Ladie is amazing. Ladie is a great college player. But I think it will be a point in this tournament where San Diego State, Ladie will get shut down and San Diego State will get to, will get will not cover and get beat up. And it's probably if they win this game will probably come against UConn, more likely than not. Assuming UConn doesn't get shocked today by Northwestern. But when it's all said and done, I just the way that that game transpired against Auburn for Yale. It is very hard for me to see Yale pull this outright upset. Let's just go that first. Because of just the way that Auburn game went. They were down seven pretty late in the game. Came back and won against a team that a lot of us thought was capable of beating UConn. I thought they were the only team in that region capable of beating UConn. And they're gone. Which makes me think UConn will have a cakewalk, but they probably won't knowing this tournament. But I don't know how much Yale has left in the tank. That's what it all comes back to here. It is so hard to have that much in the tank left for this type of game against San Diego State when it's all said and done. Um, I'm going to stay out of it. Maybe if Yale has proven they can stay in this game, uh, we'll do that. All right, look who's joining us here. All right. For the last 10 minutes or so of this program, he's going to stand. He's wearing jeans, more importantly, today. Look at that. Casual Sunday. Vinny and I are always matching that. We both have black, and then I wore my dark jeans, too. That's right. That's okay. I'm, yeah. It's okay. <laughs> I'm here, I'm I'm here to... I'm here to... I'm here to... I'm here to... the same side of the desk. I'm here to dispel uh, rumors that all bookmakers died after yesterday. So, so I'll, okay. I'll just, I, okay. I mean, I, I, let's just, let's just go to that. I don't, I know, I know, I know, I know you don't want to talk about bad memory, but it's okay. But I, yesterday was it's a fact It happened. I mean, that's one of the more ridiculous NCAA tournament days I can remember. I you know, it, it, especially, I mean, the only favorite that didn't get there on, on the spread was Tennessee. Or the only mm-hmm. one who didn't get there. I mean, you have the late night game last night where Creighton needs two overtimes and it goes 15 0 to begin the second overtime to cover. Um, Gonzaga's losing at halftime and then they win by 21. Mm-hmm. Uh, Arizona was a flip. I kind of, I kind of was the, the sign of the day though, Vinny, where Dayton got all the way back in that game right, and still couldn't find a way to cover the number. It should have been a sign that it was uh, heading that sort of way yesterday. And Tennessee, of course, got there with the, with the money line. Of course. So, so all money line. You know, I was just guys. talking to Chris Andrews and, um, he too lives and, uh, <laughs> listen, these these things happen over the course of of time. Now, uh, we were, we were just uh, reminiscing and thinking it probably the uh, the best. So I'm not going to say the worst. See, I'm going to I'm gonna take the the high road here. The best, uh, I'd say NCAA day for betters, one of the best ever, really in 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 our careers. And again, we've been we've been doing this for a while. So, what you know, what do you do you? Here, here's and here's what we always tell our folks too. Was everything done procedurally correct? You know, it's eleven to ten. Um, there's it. It happens. You do. You pay. You pay, and people, you know, deserve to uh, to to have those kinds of days sometimes. And over the course of of time, they're going to come. And then you, uh, you know, there's there's always today. So, Vinny, let me ask you yeah. this because Jeff and I were just talking about yeah. it. Do you think that is going to have an impact on how betters bet today? Think we'll see. Have you seen more action well, on favorites well, today? Uh, well, I know this. We need Colorado. I know that's not going to shock anybody. <laughs> we need Colorado in this first game. Um, I think Marquette's up eighteen eleven early. Yeah. So uh, and and that game did close uh, uh, with Marquette uh, the four and a half. So it doesn't look like a lot. Uh, you know, you said well, it opened four. It's only four and a half. But again, it's it's parlays and it's uh, money line parlays. And by the way, this is this is a general public 
who had the, the, the better day yesterday. Because when we wanted buyback, Alec, you were looking, you had opportunity to buy back some good numbers yesterday, right? I mean, you probably bet against some of the moves, you know, um, and they didn't, you know, the moves, you know, didn't the the the, uh, the dogs that you took obviously didn't get there. So, um, but that's a great question, and so far we've seen uh, we've seen it carry over to today. And listen, you know what, folks, uh, philosophy being, you know, uh, stick with what uh, what got them here so far. So so far, yeah. A uh, Duke, I'm sorry, uh, uh, another one. Um, uh, Purdue, Purdue's up to eleven and a half. You're probably gonna, you might see uh, twelve in that game, uh, and then, you know, which will probably be a take. They did take the nine and a half with Texas A and M, but Houston, even though they're a, a, a four and a half to one money line favorite, again, public is just roll it, roll these money line favorites uh, uh, into uh, into each other. Our the biggest surprise for us was Clemson Baylor. Yeah, of course, the one dog that I think is the worst one on the board today is the one that's getting bet. <laughs> uh, they did take the four and a half <laughs> with uh, with with Clemson. So uh, yeah, I, I listen. I don't think it'll be. As pronounced as yesterday, but if it is, um, we'll pay and go on <laughs> and, and get so ready for 105 starting was, on Thursday. You beat me to the punch. Then. There you I was go. Say you're still you're still going to go to the the 105 vig, uh, absolutely as always for the final two weekends of the tournament. Listen, you don't change your your stuff. If you if you if you said that you're going to do it, you do it. Of course. All right. The sign outside says gambling. I don't know if you. Uh, yeah. If anybody noticed that, but that's, uh, that's what it is. So. Now, the, uh, in my direct line of sight, I see pie gal. That's what I see. Vin. Well, you know what pie gal means? Gamble. Yeah, exactly. There you, go. <laughs> you like that, Ann? <laughs> Baccarat, gamble, right? <laughs> Craps, gamble. It's all the same. <laughs> <laughs> um, real quick, uh, the two games that I yeah. already said for next weekend. And they are, I, look, all things considered, they were the matchups that if chalk prevailed, we were going to get. And boy, sure. what matchups they are. Good ones. With uh, Illinois and Iowa State and Boston already up. Creighton, two and a half. Two and a half on that one. And the other one is two and a half as well with Creighton and Tennessee and Detroit. Yeah. I mean, I if, if again, if chalk prevails today, I mean, we are looking at some heavy duty, great matchups in, sure. in this Sweet 16, even even more so than usual. I mean, especially with those two. I mean, those two games, already super excited for both of those. Yeah. Uh, Iowa State, two and a half, as well as Tennessee, two and a half, and, uh, and two great. I think, listen, the, the, the tournament has not disappointed. Forget, you know, win-loss for the house, right? Um, that that's We're enjoying it. The people are having a great time. Uh, the action has been great. It's going to continue to be great. Uh, and so, uh, you know, th- whatever the matchups are, and again, if here's the thing about it, if chalk prevails, right, uh, Jeff and Alex, that the numbers will be smaller, right? The, the right. spreads will be or shorter. Maybe that will uh, also stimulate some uh, some more uh, two way action because, listen, you know, and two way action, as you know, that's what keeps keeps us going. Um, the thing about uh, that is, it, you know, whether, let's so if you're a professional and you're looking f- to take points, right, maybe you're going to be able to get three or three and a half. Uh, if, and you know what, if you, if you like the favorite, maybe you'll lay two, maybe they'll take two and a half. So I think the, the, uh, there'll, there'll certainly be more two-way action overall if the, if the uh, favorites continue to prevail and, you know, when we get to the uh, to the Sweet 16, then um, you know that uh, that'll be the case. So, uh, all in all, or the uh, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, and, and we get through to the Elite Eight. So, there's nothing uh, uh, nothing wrong with uh, with with that. You deal with it. You just go. That's all. all right. How's the uh, action been on the uh, on the women's tournament so far? Women's been good too. Honestly, I have to be honest. Uh, good. I mean, look. You know, there's some really good teams, some good storylines, some good coaching personalities. You know, uh, you know Reese and Clark, uh, uh, names that everybody is familiar with uh, on, on the ladies' side. So, uh, you know, they've got their – we had uh, – and, and the way the games were positioned yesterday, 
Uh, and we had a lot of people asking. We had the the Iowa game was on the big screen yesterday uh, with with sound for a while. I mean, so listen, uh, you have to tip your cap to to the women's tournament. Uh, there, it's it's a it's a good tournament. I mean, it was pretty chalky as well yesterday with uh, pretty chalky. Bit, uh, with, you know, Vin, well, Vinny, yeah. there was one seed upset <laughs> yeah. in the first. Round. I know. I mean, like I said, pretty <laughs> chalky. Damn chalky. How's that? That's better. Um, you know, so wh- why 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 would why would the women's tournament be any different, right? So, uh, but it was good and good action, and uh, I think that'll that'll continue. Listen, it's uh, getting more. Uh, the ladies are getting more notoriety, and they yeah. and they deserve it. And uh, they're, they're, it's 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 a terrific product that uh, that they've got over there and uh, on the women's side. Well said. I agree. Doing very good. Tomorrow, we'll have all the lines for the Sweet Sixteen. Yeah. They'll be up tonight, three o'clock. We're back tomorrow, Alex and I. Uh, I don't know where Matt Neverd is. He disappeared again, but he'll be back on Wednesday uh, this upcoming week. Uh, Vinny, this is, as always, I just have to give the plug, even though it, there's no party upstairs today. Up there all three days. Mm. Crowds were great. Excellent. Uh, crowd, I mean, Friday, Friday especially. I mean, that window where we got Florida, Colorado craziness, yeah. along with Yale upsetting Auburn in the same swoop. Yeah, I, they got very much lively, and also as always, first to fifteen on an underdog. Still, the greatest, favorite bet of everyone during March here at the South Point. The greatest uh, prop bet of the year uh, never disappoints. And in fact, there was a table up there. I think it was actually right next to your table. Yes, right behind us. Right behind and us. those folks didn't. They weren't as familiar with the first to fifteen as as a lot of people were. And when they found out about it, they so the tables were tens, right? They were ten toppers, and everybody at that table, I think they put like five or ten bucks in, and and, and, and they bet the dog. And they had, they had, you you saw the reaction, right? I mean, it I was mean, like well, they, yeah. they had a little lottery ticket. They had a great time with it, so it's a lot of fun. Absolutely, yeah. Always. We get a kick out of it too. We we feed off the energy. Believe me. First to fifteen so. available all the way through the national That's right. championship game mm-hmm. here at the South Point, Vinny. Thank you, as always. Good to be with both of you. Good job. Crew, excellent. And again, we're alive and well. I Come fig- and see us. I figured you would <laughs> We'll be. pay you. I figured you would be That's alive right. and well. That's right. Vinny. Alex, we'll see you tomorrow as well. I'm Jeff Parle. Shout out uh, Family Ties in the back today. Drew Dog and great work, as always. I'm Jeff Parle. We'll see you tomorrow, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Sports by the book. Also, don't forget punchlines tomorrow at noon. Frank Nicotero going to be gloating because uh, he got there on the Creighton, Oregon first half over, despite <laughs> whining like crazy for the first 14 minutes of the game, Vinny. Yeah, well, I, I heard Frank's got his own uh, uh, betting service now, too. So uh, <laughs> I'm sure that'll be a, a sponsor uh, starting with tomorrow's uh, punchlines. That's uh, punchfranknicotero.com <laughs> for anyone out there. We'll see you again tomorrow, 3 o'clock, Sports by the Book, South Point Studio.